Hey there, it's Mark from Mark's Astro Journey here to present in this video a couple of options in PixInsight for removing gradients from stacked images. In this uh, case, you see that I have from my LRGB uh, monochrome imaging session four stacks open for the Jellyfish Nebula. And you can see right away off the first one here, the red one, the red channel, that I have a gradient going from side to side that's pretty prominent. And if we look at the others, we'll see the same thing. So here is the luminance channel, similar gradient. And then we have the green channel, also very similar. And finally, the blue channel. So in this video, I want to talk briefly about a couple options in PixInsight to remove these gradients. This is more intended for newer people to PixInsight, not trying to explain this to the experts or the seasoned people, obviously. One of the things that is an issue with astrophotography is we have the moon, city lights, house lights, and even other sources of light. And this introduces signal into our images. And we really want to remove that signal to improve the quality of our image. Typically, it'll be in every frame we capture, and then we stack them. And so we accumulate all of the gradients from all those uh, individual subframes into our stack, which makes it a little more complex sometimes to remove. But there are some good tools to help us to remove it. And so two of those tools here in PixInsight under process or under background modelization, and one is automatic background extractor. The nice thing about this option within PixInsight is without changing any options, I can actually improve the image quite a bit and remove quite a bit of the gradient, depending on the image, sometimes almost all of it. So I'll show that here and notice I have draw sample boxes checked and you'll see what that presents visually. And I'll go ahead and drag the little triangle over to the image to run this. And so, first of all, notice this visual representation of the samples that Automatic Background Extractor placed for our image. So it gives us that visual representation so we can understand the samples it created. It also creates this model of the background, and we can see the gradient if we move this other stuff out of the way and we put these side by side, we can see how here's the original image to the left and you can see how the gradient is pretty well represented going side to side in this background model. And then here is the auto or the corrected image with ABE applied. And what we can see right away is although there might still be some gradient remaining, it's actually a fairly significant improvement. To my eye, it looks like the right-hand side has less gradient still, but you do see a much more even uh, background now. So quite a bit of the gradient has been removed. It's an excellent tool to help us improve our image without a lot of effort. I don't plan on going into every one of these options and tweaking them. This is something a person can uh, read in the online threads, obviously. I want to keep this overview fairly simple and not try to delve into you know real detailed information. So now that we've looked at ABE, what I wanted to do is actually I want to save this correction from automatic background extraction. So next what I want to do is I want to talk about the other option that's very similar but gives you more control, dynamic background extraction. Usually when I open this dialog, the first thing I do is do a reset here at the bottom right. And this allows us to modify some of these settings. And one of these things we might modify is the sample radius. I'm going to increase it to 25. This is a trial and error, I think somewhat, depending on your image and the target and your background. And then click Resize All. I'm also, before I add the samples, I'm going to choose Subtraction, my correction. Now we can place our samples on the image. And so as we place the samples, we're looking for typically areas where there's not nebulosity. Some software says it's okay to put these samples over top of stars. Others say to try to avoid stars. It will flag the samples we place that are not in uh, what's an optimal location on the image for the sampling for the dynamic background extraction. And then we can delete those red ones. And so once we have our samples placed, we can actually then um, run the DBE, 
first of all, before we look at the result. So what we'll notice here is this produced a similar model of the background or the gradient. And so it looks very similar to the one that was created by ABE. It's maybe slightly different. And then looking at the actual result that was produced, the correction, I'll stretch this. It's not too bad. You can see improvement, but it still looks like, you know, we have the gradient still here on the left-hand side. So looking out on the forums, I noticed that there's one forum post about this on PixInsight entitled Dynamic Background Extraction Execution Cycles. This is where, you know, several people are commenting here that in some cases you might have to run DBE or ABE several times you know, several cycles to accomplish what you're looking for. So what we could do is we could take this result image and I'm just going to save it. I'm going to close the original for now. Oh, I had to close this window though to close the original. I don't really need to close it, but I was wanting to get the uh, DBE focus off of the original image that I had started with. Now if we go back to DBE and we do a reset and choose subtraction again. Now that we've had some correction, you can try to go and improve it with some additional samples. So let's stretch this and take a look at the result. So it's looking better. There's still a slight difference between the right-hand side and the left-hand side. So we could attempt another pass, but you can see how iteratively we can still even improve the correction to the gradient if we want to take a little time and place some more samples. And another thing I've done in some tools is when you're placing your samples, if you zoom in, then you're able to you know see better where there's not really anything in the background. And this may be another way to improve the placement of your samples. But regardless, we can see how using DBE or ABE helps us to remove the gradient from our stacked image. And this way, as we're early on in the portion of the linear processing of our data, we can get this background extraction completed, get rid of the gradient for the most part, and improve the quality of our image. So I hope if you're new to Pix Insight, found this quick overview helpful. There's obviously many threads on forums and different, you know, posts out on the internet. And even videos where other people talk about their experience with ABE and DBE. And if you have tips and tricks or you found something that you think is a really good way to deal with gradients in PixInsight, I invite you to post your comments because not only myself but others interested in this topic can benefit from the things that you've learned from your experience with amateur astronomy. I am wishing you clear skies.